Look, I get it, you've been watching hundreds and hundreds of guides on YouTube because you want to fix your stuttery Twitch dream. But even after trying everything, nothing works and now you're getting desperate. So why is this video going to be any different? I've tried so many guides to try fix my own streams and I've just got super, super frustrated and you're probably frustrated as well. And the reason you're frustrated is because every guide on YouTube sucks. Like this guy's video. This guy's the worst. Okay, maybe some of them are good. Like the Alpha Gaming one is pretty good. But for the most part, every guide that I've seen leaves out one bit of information that is very, very, very important. And that is that they never tell you what's actually wrong with your stream. Every single stream can be stuttering for a different problem, and every problem requires a different solution. Let's say, for example, your problem is with your internet, and you see this guy's telling you to change your resolution, or use a different CPU encoding preset, or use X264 instead of NVENC. But none of that's going to do anything, because the problem is your internet has nothing to do with your computer. So stick around, I'm gonna be explaining how to figure out what's wrong with your stream and how to fix it. I know this is gonna be a long video, but trust me, there's gonna be things in this video that I have not seen in any other YouTube video before. Also, I made this video. So how do you think I feel? But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We make all sorts of videos to make your stream look awesome. The last couple of videos were about how to animate your Twitch stream, so I recommend you guys check that out. All right, let's spend a minute or two to talk about how OBS works. In every single stream, OBS is going to be doing three main things for you. The first thing OBS does is it puts together your scenes. Your face cam, your game capture, your alerts, chat boxes, everything that makes up your scene and you can see in the OBS preview window is put together and made into frames. This is called compositing, and it is mainly done on your GPU. Now, I want to be crystal clear, it's done on the same part of your GPU that is used for your games, and has nothing to do with NVENC. This is going to be really important later, so keep this in mind. The next thing OBS does is it takes those frames and turns it into a video stream. But not only that, it compresses that video stream into a size that's more suitable to be uploaded to Twitch. In OBS, if you're using X264, this is mainly done by your CPU. If you're using hardware encoding like NVENC or AMD VC or QuickSync, this is done on an entirely separate chip on your graphics card. Now remember that, this is a dedicated chip on your graphics card. It's not the same part of your graphics card that's used for games. And then the last thing OBS does is it just takes that video, pumps it out into one of Twitch's ingest servers, and then eventually to your millions of fans. We're just gonna call this uh, the uh, networking phase. Well, if your stream is stuttering, it's going to be stuttering in one of these three phases. So how do you figure out which phase is causing your stream to stutter? Good question, let me show you. In OBS Studio, you wanna click on view and then you'll see stats. This is only available in OBS Studio, so if you're using Streamlabs OBS, stop doing that come over to OBS Studio, it's way better. If there's one bit of advice to take away from this video, it's this. Use the stats menu in OBS. It is the first place you should go to anytime your stream starts stuttering. If you're getting lagged frames or rendering lag, this means that OBS is stuttering during compositing. In other words, the bottleneck is more than likely your GPU. If you're getting skip frames or encoding lag, then the bottleneck is more than likely your CPU or the dedicated chip on your graphics card if you're using NVENC. And if you're getting drop frames, then this is a network problem, which means some of your video stream isn't quite making it all the way to Twitch's ingest servers. Now, it's really important that you understand the difference between lag frames, skip frames, and drop frames because it's going to tell you exactly what the bottleneck is so you know exactly what to fix. Now, I recommend you start running a test stream. Now, you can run a test stream by either making a fake Twitch account and streaming to that, or you can attach bandwidth test equals true at the end of your stream key in OBS. This is just to make sure that your viewers don't see that you're live and think that you're actually streaming. Now, when you're running a Twitch stream, have this stats menu up and take a look at it. Once you get stuttering, you're gonna see one or more of these numbers go up. The number that goes up is going to tell you what your bottleneck is. All right, now you've done the test stream and you know what your bottleneck is, we're gonna talk about each type of lag and things that you can try to fix it. I'm gonna leave timestamps here, so if you're having one of these problems, you can just skip ahead to the part that's relevant to your situation. All right, let's talk about drop frames. Now, this could either be really easy to solve or really difficult to solve. There's only one number that matters in OBS, and that is your bitrate. Nothing else matters. I know you've probably seen another video that changing your resolution can help, or maybe changing encoder. OBS doesn't work like that, it's only your bitrate that matters. And all that you need to do is make sure that your upload speed is fast enough to support the bitrate that you put into OBS. Alright, so all I need to do is go to speedtest.net and find out how fast my upload speed is. Wrong! 
I know every single video you've ever seen has totally used speed test on it. And by all means, if you're having general internet problems, then yeah, go use that site. But that only tests your upload speeds to their servers. It doesn't tell you how fast your upload speed is to Twitch. So instead we're gonna be using a tool called Twitch test. And what this does is it tests your upload speed directly to all of Twitch's servers. So this is the most accurate speed test you could ever do. So go into the description box down below, download Twitch tests and run it. It's gonna ask you for your stream key and then to select every server that you wanna test. After that, just hit start and let it run for a minute. When it's done, you're gonna see a bunch of numbers. What you're looking for is the server with the highest speed, the lowest round trip time and the highest quality, as close to 100 as you can get. Once you have the speed, you just wanna make sure that the bit rate that you put in OBS is lower than the number you get in Twitch test. I would say keep it to a max of like 80% of this number just to give it a little bit of headroom. Just don't go over 8,000 kilobits per second because Twitch hard caps you and none of your viewers will be able to watch your stream. Like literally, your viewers will just get a black screen. I've tried it before. You might also want to manually select the server that you want to connect to. By default, Twitch is set to auto, so it decides for you. So just go ahead and set that manually just to be sure you're connecting to the fastest server. And of course, all the general network troubleshooting stuff applies. So reset your router, make sure all your network drivers are up to date, or use Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi. Don't ever use Wi-Fi. But if you're 100% sure that you've done all of that, and the speeds that you're getting on Twitch tests are nowhere near as fast as the speeds you're getting on speedtest.net, this might be the time where you have to call your ISP. I know the pain, I've been going through the exact same problem right now, and I've been calling my ISP for like two weeks straight. I've spoken to like six different people. It sucks. You might be having a similar problem. Hell, I've heard of some ISP that intentionally throttle your upload speed, which could include sites like Twitch. So call your RSP and get them to sort that out for you. All right, let's talk about encoding lag. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna say this. Go into Task Manager and make sure you close any programs that you don't need running. It sounds dumb, but I've helped two people before only to realize both of them had crypto miners running in the background, sucking up 70% of their CPU and they didn't even realize it. Now, as for OBS settings, there's only four settings that you care about. Your output resolution, your frame rate, your encoder, and your preset. A lot of people seem to think that changing your bitrate makes a difference. It doesn't make any difference. Don't ever change your bitrate unless it's a network problem. So the first thing you're gonna try to do is dropping your output resolution. You could ignore canvas resolution for now. We're gonna deal with that later. And basically what this does is it scales down your stream into a smaller resolution that is easier for your CPU to encode. For example, this is an example of a 1080p stream. And if we drop it down to 900p, this is what it looks like. And if we drop it even further to 720p, this is what it looks like. You see how much smaller that is? You see how much less work your CPU has to do now? This is why changing your output resolution is the first thing I recommend if you're getting encoding lag. The second thing I recommend is dropping your frame rate from 60 FPS to 30 FPS. It's pretty obvious what this does. It's just gonna half the number of frames that your CPU has to encode. Here's some footage of Apex running at 60 FPS compared to 30 FPS. Can you tell a difference? Maybe, but look how much of my CPU usage that I've shaved off. Hell, if you're streaming on a potato, you might even wanna go even further down from 30 FPS just until you can afford a better PC. The next you can do is try changing your encoder. By default, OBS uses X264 or software encoding, which basically means it's using your CPU to do the encoding. The problem with this is that everything in computer uses your CPU, but if you're using a newish graphics card, you can use hardware encoding, which basically offloads all of the encoding load onto a dedicated chip on your graphics card. Now, because this is done on a dedicated chip, this is gonna be completely separate from the part of your GPU that is used for running your games. Now the hardware encoder for Nvidia graphics cards is called NVENC and for AMD cards, it's called AMD VCE. I don't have an AMD graphics card, so I don't have any experience with that, but from what I understand, it works mostly the same. I would say that if you're ever getting skip frames, you should always use NVENC because the performance impact is basically zero. That's not gonna be the case with X264 at all. Keep in mind, NVENC generally won't give you as good quality as x264 but you're getting skip frames so i wouldn't even worry about that right now plus if you're using the new nvenc encoder on a newer graphics card like an rtx graphics card the quality is actually really really good and then the last thing i recommend is to change your preset this is going to apply for x264 and nvenc again if you're using amd i don't know what it looks like for amd if you're using x264 your preset is going to range from ultra fast to very slow i'm not going to go into what this means exactly but just know that the faster your preset is 
the lower quality your stream will be, but it will be easier on your CPU. And the slower your preset is, the better quality you'll get, but at the expense of your CPU usage. If you're getting skip frames, just use a faster preset until you stop getting skip frames. If you're using NVENC, the preset is gonna range from max quality to max performance. It's pretty self-explanatory what this does. So if you want it to be easier in code, bump that down to performance or max performance. So once you've tuned all of those four settings, you should notice that your CPU usage will go down significantly. But if you're looking to save even more of your CPU usage, you can try deleting any scenes and sources that you don't need in OBS. So delete any videos or any browser sources that you don't use. If you're really struggling, you can delete every single scene and every single source so that you only have one source, which is your game capture, and see if that helps anything. Okay, so now let's talk about rendering lag. And this one is gonna be a real I don't know why, but I watched so many guides on YouTube and very few of them ever even mention rendering lag at all. Which sucks for you because if you're playing a game like Apex, I can almost guarantee that rendering lag is the problem that you're getting. Now the reason you're getting rendering lag is because the OBS needs to use your GPU for compositing, the very same part of your GPU that is used to run your games. But nowadays games can really really eat up your GPU, leaving nothing for OBS to do its thing. If this was a CPU related issue this would be really easy because you can just go into task manager and then set the priority on OBS to be high, but nothing exists like that for your GPU. Supposedly the newest update of Windows fixes this to give more priority to OBS, but in my experience, this hasn't really done that much. So if you're getting rendering lag, there's two things you're gonna notice. One is that even if you're not streaming, just by having OBS open, the OBS window is gonna start lagging and you'll see the frame rate drop. If this happens, you'll know that it has absolutely nothing to do with your encoding settings and everything to do with rendering lag. The second thing you might notice is if you go into the task manager and look at your GPU usage, your GPU usage is probably up near 100%. If this is happening, it is definitely rendering lag. So what are your options? Well, one option is you can move to a two PC streaming setup. So you have one PC entirely dedicated for streaming and another entirely dedicated for gaming. I don't know why I blanked out just then. But I'm not going to tell you spend $1,000 unless you're like Elon Musk or something. And if you're Elon Musk, I have no idea what, what you're doing watching my video. So what you can do is first thing is drop all the settings in your game to low. I know it sucks because you just spent like $500 on a new graphics card and you want to play max settings, but you need some way to lighten the load from your GPU. Apart from just lowering the settings, what you can also do is set a frame rate cap on your game. So instead of letting it run at like a 160 FPS. You can cap it so that it stays at 60 FPS. Now you can do this by turning on VSync in the game that you're playing, but the best way that I've found to cap your frame rate is to use something called the RevaTuner Statistics Server. Now I've left the link for RevaTuner down below, so go ahead, download that, install that. You can set it to start with Windows every time Windows starts up, so you don't have to manually run it every time. And once you have it running, it's really simple. Just go to where it says frame rate limit and set the frame rate limit to 60 FPS or whatever frame rate you want to set it at. The main thing is you just want to set a frame rate cap on your game so your game just doesn't run wild and use up all your GPU. Now as for the OBS side of things, there are a few things that you can do. First thing is if you're using the new NVENC, set your quality from max quality down to quality or below. If you're using max quality, it's going to use some of your GPU. You can also turn off look ahead and psycho visual tuning. Both of these options are going to use more of your GPU as well. You can also go to the video video tab and change your base resolution or canvas resolution to the same resolution as your output resolution. So let's say for example, your output is 720p. You can change your base resolution to 720p as well, which reduces the amount of scaling your GPU has to do. Just keep in mind, if you've designed your stream for 1080p, you're gonna have to resize all your sources and make them fit again. But the biggest thing you can do in OBS to lighten your GPU usage is to get rid of any sources that you aren't using like browser sources and most importantly, webcams. If you have a camera like a C920, which runs at 1080p, or even a Logitech Brio, which runs at 4K, running these cameras at their max resolution is gonna use up a lot more of your GPU. Like, look how much more of your GPU you're using 
at 1080p compared to 720p. So since most of the time your camera is going to be shrunk down anyway, change your resolution down to like 720p or even lower. You can set it to 480p if you want. And the last thing I'm going to recommend is to turn off the game mode in your Windows settings. I'm not going to say definitively that this is going to make a difference because I know that Windows is making some changes to the way game mode works. So the advice I give right now may be different three months from now or six months from now or whenever you watch this. So all I'll say is is try streaming with game mode off and game mode on and see if it makes a difference. But that's all the advice I have for getting rid of rendering lag. The main thing you want to keep in mind is do whatever you can to take off the load from your GPU. So really cap that frame rate and lower resolution on your cameras in OBS. Those make the biggest differences. So uh, yeah, that's everything you need to know to make sure your stream doesn't stutter anymore. So if you found that video helpful, make sure to leave a like in this video. And if you think there's anything else that I missed out, leave a comment down below. Kill me, this video took forever to make. You're also free to join the Discord. Let me know if there's any other video ideas that you'd like to see me cover. You can also follow me on Twitch. I stream at twitch.tv slash Nutella forever. I stream four or five days a week week and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions there too. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys um, sometime, I think. I still suck at ending videos.